Hey, 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 Arlen Hannes. If you are new to this channel, make sure you follow me on all social medias down below. It should be seen. Arlen Gamer on Twitter, Arlen Gamer on uh, Instagram, which is spelled a little different, also on Twitch um, and Facebook. It would be much appreciated because now I have ads on Twitch, so that helps me make more money there. And plus, here on YouTube, um, just checking out my videos and subscribing, of course, helps this channel grow, getting the algorithm. Um, I was gravitated and interested in what PewDiePie had to say. PewDiePie is one of those creators that inspired me as a YouTuber to actually start YouTube. I know a lot of other YouTubers are inspired by PewDiePie, but they are not, I don't think it, he inspired them to start YouTube. I grew up watching PewDiePie, and I realized not only how much I'm, I'm kind of like him in some ways, and he's relatable, but uh, of course, I am... Uh, way different from him in the same way and one of the ways is that I don't like what he said about Marvel now usually I don't disagree with PewDiePie because he is my favorite YouTuber so I sort of have a bias towards him but uh, when he made this title of this video I expected him to talk about something else no the fact that he, and not keep in mind I only watched the first few seconds of this video and when he mentioned that Marvel is his most controversial thing he's done sure you could argue it could have been an inward thing or which I was a joke I don't see why people didn't see it as a joke uh, or gamer culture I mean I'm not gonna lie I say racist stuff all my or I wouldn't even say it's racist it's just a word they took it out of context um, I say stuff to my white friends while I'm playing a video game so I can definitely relate when he said something like super offensive with the n-word thing so that let's get that out of the room whatever and then you know it's down to all Jews arguably more controversial controversial than the Marvel stuff okay maybe but to me the reason why the Marvel thing is the most controversial for me is because Marvel I just love Marvel I love how they put those films together and made it into a movie and I just it's not gonna cut it I don't like the people I said he doesn't like it he is my favorite youtuber but the fact that he's he said he don't like Marvel movies and now he's addressing this this video because he got so much hate in this video and I see why I've gotten to hate on my Marvel videos too um, because there's certain I've said certain things I didn't like about the film but the fact that he said he doesn't like Marvel movies altogether my guy, what's wrong with you? PewDiePie, I love you, but uh, what's wrong? <laughs> Alright, anyways, let's, let's get into the video. Like, what's wrong with you? What? No. Oh. oh. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Uh, what is my worst controversy by PewDiePie? What is my most controversial video? <laughs> Bish lasagna? Bridge? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Nope. It's why I don't like Marvel movies. <laughs> let's let's look at this video. This is the worst dislike ratio I have on any. Last but not least, in Infinity War, apparently a big deal of the movie is that a lot of superheroes die. We, I'm not gonna spoil which ones or anything like that, but let's just enter. Thank goodness, it's the most controversial video. He deserves it. Like, there's no reason. Why this guy should get away with it. He can't get away with saying what he said, man. I'm sorry. I know some of you are PewDiePie fans. You can't let him get away with this, okay? Not with our Marvel. Tain the idea that, uh, let's say Iron Man dies. <laughs> let's say Iron Man dies. Marvel, write that down. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> good one, Felix. <laughs> I like how my main criticism of the Marvel films was that no one actually dies. I was proven wrong. To be honest, I never watched uh, Endgame or any of the last films. And and uh, when I flew recently from Japan to UK, my computer were in charge. I had no choice but to watch what was offered. And it was all Avengers, of course. And which is one of the reasons I, I didn't like Marvel, because it's literally everywhere. Uh, ironically, but I watched it and I actually enjoyed it uh, for the first time. 
Please don't dislike this video. I, I love Marvel, okay? This is not the point. And I realized the reason why I liked it so much was because I finally liked one of its heroes. Thanos. <laughs> That's right. Thanos is epic. And also very sexy. I realize that there's already a hundred videos at least about the philosophy of Thanos and, and why was Thanos right? Hmm. <laughs> Population. <laughs> well, I would argue that Thanos was actually better than all of us. Here's why. <laughs> well, first of all, was Thanos right? To understand that, you must understand what is right. They have glasses on now. <laughs> What is right? Think about it. Why do I? I it's such a smug question. <laughs> Don't think too hard. This is not I'm 14 and this is D. I'm waiting. Right is, in most senses, and you could call an ethical system to bring wellness to something, a community or yourself. And sometimes making the right choice will lead to unethical actions. Like, say, wiping off half the universe. <laughs> well the philosopher Søren Kierkegaard, who I've spoken about before on my channel, calls this concept in the book of Fear and Trembling the theological suspension of the ethical. Theolos means... Alright, I know. This is why I like PewDiePie, and I'm gonna tell you why. Alright, so he got me hooked in this video and what you know I was already pissed off by him saying he doesn't like Marvel movies but the fact that he is pulling out a book explaining why he he's not one of these haters he's not like some mindless person just sitting here telling you this is I don't like Marvel movies because they're suck and because they're trash and they're for kids he's actually giving some thought and actually like showing you why and and then and in an intelligent way that I can not only, maybe I still disagree that he doesn't like the movies, but I can agree with his opinion. This is why I like PewDiePie, because he forces you to kind of think for yourself. He's kind of underrated when it comes to that sense. People just think he's a silly guy who makes meme reviews and like plays video games. But he's much deeper than you think he is. And this, one, this is one of those videos that allows you as a viewer and for me as a reactor or a gamer or whatever type of pers person I am to connect with him even more. Th this is what I try to do on YouTube and hopefully that's why I'm doing with this commentary telling you why. You know, I agree with PewDiePie right at this second. Um, I'm still going to get into it and give more of my opinion but so far I've been loving it. And it's been amazing. Um, Thanos, the ideology of Thanos. I don't know if Thanos was right. It's, it's kind of hard. Like he said, uh, sometimes you have to do things in an unethical way to get the right result. Um, I can think of times I've had to do that. You know, I maybe had to cut friends uh, to maybe reach this next point because they were a bad influence on me. And if I didn't reach that next point, that could keep me from reaching certain goals. But these goals are right because I have to make sure I'm good and happy, right? So it, there's so many different ways of doing the right thing, maybe for, for yourself or for society or a community. And sometimes that requires something bad to happen or something unethical. And this is kind of cool. This is kind of cool goal in, in Greek and it's basically means putting aside what is right or w what is technically good to do uh, in hope for something greater if you buy G Fuel enter the code PewDiePie to become epically energized and and thirst quenched you made a theological decision <laughs> Thanos believed that wiping out half the universe I like how he plugged his uh He's just drinking that, so people can't get it. Universe would be, would make it so that life would actually be able to continue and thrive and become better and not just cease to exist. I think that's the consensus. I don't really remember. This universe is finite. Its resource is finite. If life is left unchecked, life will cease to exist. It needs correction. You don't know that! 
I'm the only one who knows that. But his goal is for things to turn out well, and he doesn't take pleasure in the killing, which I think is an important distinction of him being good or right. And that's the important distinction of why he's likable. He's a tragic hero. This makes Thanos what certain Kierkegaard would call a knight of infinite resignation. Uh, and so what is that then? Well, Kierkegaard defined life in three different stages. And I, I've spoken about this on my channel before. But the first one where most of us is, is in the aesthetic. Uh, we're sort of trapped here. We're focusing purely on our senses. We try and maximize. We try and maximize them as much as possible to feel as good as possible. We don't live for one single thing, but many, many different things. And I think most people can relate to that. We we make these choices based on what will make us happy. So how do you get out of the aesthetic? Well, you move on to the ethical. And to put it very simple, it, it's basically living for others or another purpose beyond your senses. And it's here where the Knight of Infinite Resignation can exist. Just because it's called a knight doesn't mean it has to be a man, it could be any. But I also believe Kierkegaard calls it a knight to symbolize someone very strong and, and chivalrous and tough. You would have to be to make these sort of decisions that a Knight of Infinite Resignation has to make. When Kierkegaard talks about the infinite, he's talking about what you love. And that is what defines your entire worldview. The quote from the book is, So for the first thing, the knight will have power to concentrate the whole content of life and the whole significance of reality in one single wish. The knight of infinite resignation resigns just that, everything for this wish. Uh, and Thanos did this. He put, he put everything aside to reach this goal, to reach this wish. A hero is typically defined by what they love. What do you love? Have you ever made a decision on something that you sacrifice for the greater good? Uh, maybe you've given up on a dream to pursue happiness for someone else. By understanding what we love, we open up ourselves to become more vulnerable. And this is something that's very hard to do. But a Knight of Infinite Resignation also understands that the world is finite. The world doesn't always fall into the right place. Sometimes. Uh, you will not always win. There's a limit to each and every one of our capacities and no matter how hard we try Let's say you have all these mean superheroes who manages to freaking turn back time To stop you Jesus time travel What I, I See this is an absolute win. Let's say they didn't snap Thanos back. Sorry spoilers. Would Thanos given up? Given up at this point? I don't think so. And this is what Kierkegaard calls for when you reach your uh, your capacity of your your limit. You must then turn inward. And here you can keep your love. He says as as young as the day you had it. Uh, and, and it lives on spiritually infinite. This, of course, would be very painful, but you can reconcile in its spiritually infinite existence. I think it's really interesting with Kierkegaard is that he himself gave up his love of his life, Regina Olsen. So, one thing, alright, so he's talking about Thanos. Would he have given up if he snapped away? To, to elaborate on that, the clear thing is that Thanos still reached his goal. That is what I like about this film. It doesn't matter what the fuck happened, you know, in this movie, in game. In Infinity War, everything still happened, no matter how much people didn't want it to happen. That's what I love about um, in game. <laughs> Like, all the damage was still done, and they couldn't turn it back. They went back in time, but, of course, they introduced quantum theories and string time travel theories and stuff. Which means there's no way to repair the past. You know, you can only go into another past, in a past, in a different plane of existence or another dimension. You can't go technically back to a true point in time, which is crazy. So, yeah, Thanos still won. I feel like Thanos still won because at the end of the day, he left the hero still, some of them gone, dysfunctional, um, 
what he set out to do still happened. Yes, they took out a Thanos from another plane of existence, but I mean, there's a st like at the end of the day, like Thanos was saying, I am inevitable. Those words were very, very strong. Sorry, spoiler alert. Um, those words were very, very, very terrifying when I heard them said. Even though I knew, in my head, I knew, you know, Iron Man was going to sacrifice, well, I didn't know he was going to sacrifice himself to the wind. But I knew that if he stopped Thanos, you know, at the end of the day, when he said he's inevitable, before he snapped and then, you know, Iron Man took the glove. I mean, not the glove, but the stones. It's like, those words are so crazy because he is inevitable. Because it still happened. And in another timeline, another timeline, another timeline, Thanos still did what he did. That is crazy when you think about it like that. It makes him so much deeper as a character. You won't forget Thanos. If the MCU moves on and becomes bigger and better and more popular, guess what? You won't forget Thanos in the first 10 years of the MCU because he really, really left an impact. When he said he's inevitable, it's true. No matter what you do, I'm going to wipe out half the universe. And maybe that's what had to happen. For them, not only to win an endgame, everything had to happen the way it did for life to move on. It's crazy, dude. It's crazy. Um, to pursue his writing. Another sacrifice. And I think that's probably why he came up with this whole idea. But that, I think that's what makes him so interesting, because he, he truly lived his ideas. I criticized Kierkegaard in a previous video because he explained everything previously in this book, either or, with such perfect rationale for hundreds of pages and when he talks about the aesthetic and when he talks about the ethic. But when he talked about the third stage, the religion, uh, rationale was just completely thrown out the window. And, and to me, whenever discussing religion, it has always just seemed to me like blind acceptance and blind following and it seemed like he wanted you to do the same thing. Let me see, let me see what he said. What did he say go back? So when he talks about the aesthetic, and when he talks about the ethic, but when he talked about the third stage, the religion, uh, rationale was just completely thrown out the window. And and to me, whenever discussing religion, it has always just seemed to me like blind acceptance and blind following, and it seemed like he wanted you to do the same thing. Uh, <laughs> That's true in a lot of ways. Like, see, I, I'm agnostic, so I don't necessarily believe in God. Um, and I just want to mention, like, I've always seen religion as a way to control people in some ways. I don't think religion's bad. I just think in some ways it's not necessarily good for you, you know? I feel like there's, it's just not that good. Uh, but it's clear that I didn't understand Kierkegaard because that's not what he wanted at all. In, if anything, he was strongly against that. He was strongly against blind uh, acceptance. It's part of the reason why he criticized Christianity at the time because people had just accepted becoming Christians and it wasn't something that he thought people actually practiced. Even if you're not religious... <laughs> what he just said, no one actually practices Christianity in America. I know Pete is Swedish um, and I, I think he lives in Japan now, but he, he's kind of telling the truth. I want to read this book by uh, Kierkegaard because... To be honest, no, like, no one in America truly, 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 um, practices true Christianity, like, raw, straight to the bone Christianity, and if they do, it's very, very rare. It's the same thing with, like, if you go to a Catholic school, and, you know, there's all these rules against fornication, and, you gotta have, be married before you have children, and or even have sex, and all these things. And these girls, like, are the freakiest girls on the planet. Like, they'll do anything, which is kind of scary because they're supposed to be following this religion. And all girls go out, go out the window. All rules of said religion they follow go out the window. 
And then you got someone like me who's agnostic, doesn't really necessarily believe in God. And yet again, if I have values, I live those values. Like, I'm not, I don't believe in multiple sex partners. I don't believe in cheating. I don't believe in um, always giving your body what you want. It's just certain things I do. It's actually kind of scary how people don't live their values on live by what they actually say more. You still probably blindly accept a lot of ideas. That's not to say that everyone religious blindly accept ideas, but you understand what I mean. We protect ourselves from ideas because because some of them would change our worldview if we accepted them. Some ideas will never fully get pondered and therefore we will never find our infinite. Is it a coincidence that it's called Marvel Infinity War? I don't think so. <laughs> This whole connection with Marvel is so cringy, but I tricked you into watch uh, listening philosophy epically. You know, my final message is this, and it's the same as Kierkegaard's. You have to practice your ideas. You can't just buy Ninja's Guide to how to become a pro gamer and then become a pro gamer. You must practice. I'm 14. And this is PewDiePie. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a bit random. I understand. I really enjoyed uh, Character God's Fear and Trembling. It's a great book. I kind of feel like I've jumped a bit back and forth too much with philosophy. So, but it's something that I enjoy reading and something I enjoy sharing. So I hope you guys enjoyed as well. Uh, I made a theological sacrifice <laughs> for you to hopefully enjoy this video because it's not going to get any views. <laughs> By the figurine. Bye bye. I like that. I like how he just. I, that's how I be feeling. Sometimes you make a video, I was like, it's not gonna get any views. And that's true. Sometimes you gotta make the video because it's not gonna get views, but just because you want to make it. Sometimes it's like that, dude. You just gotta make it because you want to make it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're an Arlenator or if you're not an Arlenator, subscribe. Check out all my social media. I'll probably be streaming later tonight. And peace.